All right, so just finished a laser build a couple days ago. Um, this is the Osram PL520. Uh, this laser diode only puts off about 50 to 60 milliwatts, so there's really no need to put a uh, large heat sink or a thermal compound or anything like that on there. But uh, So the cool thing about these two wavelengths, or green for that matter, at least 532 versus 520, uh, is they show up a lot better on camera than, say, 445 versus 462, even though the difference is... A pretty large difference. Um, I can definitely see between uh, 445 and 462. Uh, in real life, it definitely is a pretty noticeable difference, but on camera, it looks to be pretty much the same. Uh, but however, it's not the case when you have 520 versus 532. So I have a 90 milliwatt 532, which, by the way, is mode hopping for the first time. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell it or not, but. It's definitely mode hopping. There it goes. You just saw it. Uh, probably not warmed up. This is a brand new battery. So, anyway, it's so 532, and here is 520. Now, that leads me to the next thing I was going to say. You know, the greatest thing about 520 or diode based lasers uh, is there's no mode hopping. You don't have to worry about uh, fluctuations in output uh, based on temperatures around the laser uh, since diode based lasers don't work like that. A DPSS, uh, you know, really needs to warm up. Um, to optimum temperature. Now it's not mode hopping anymore now that it's warmed up. Um, couldn't really see it on the camera, but there were actually two beams, which would be TEM01 or TEM. I, I don't remember. I actually forgot the numbers, but anyways, basically two beams coming out of the 532 earlier. Whereas uh, diode based lasers don't do that. So now you can definitely tell there is a huge noticeable difference on camera. Um, you know. It's not as noticeable, believe it or not, in person as it is on camera, but you can see that the 532 is a slight lighter, slight bit lighter, and the 520 is a little darker, also known as forest green. Now this is a, uh, a single mode diode, so it's pretty funny that the beam is so large, uh, but it does get narrowed down to a very fine, very, very fine spot uh, as it gets further down range. So I was actually originally going to buy the diode uh, with the driver attached to it from DTR. Uh, if you guys know who that is, then if you're watching this, you probably do. <laughs> But I was actually going to buy the driver that was already pre-attached to the diode, but I decided to ultimately go with the 220 uh, from a different company. And I did that because I didn't want to push it at full power because pretty much the max uh, suggested current on the PL520 is 250 milliamps. And I kind of wanted to get a little more longevity out of it, a little bit lower output, uh, even though the output difference between 220 and 250 milliamps is not really going to be much of a difference. And the only thing that's uh, the only thing that's going to be able to detect it would be a laser power meter. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and just go with a 220 milliamp driver, and uh, even with that and a three element lens, definitely getting some pretty decent output out of this thing. So like I said, I'll hook this thing up to the laser power mirror, or I'll fire it uh, on the laser power mirror later on and see what we come up with. Um, pretty interesting story, <laughs> a very interesting story. When I first built this thing, I put two LiPo 4s, or lithium iron phosphate batteries in there, which is really no big deal because most of my other lasers, uh, like my 405, my 445, my 462, the output is exactly the same almost whether or not I use LiPo 4 or use lithium ion. But for some reason, it's a different story on this. When I use LiPo 4s, um, basically the, the green Tenergy batteries, I'm, I was getting about 33 to 34 milliwatts max. That was peak, about 34 milliwatts peak, and it would uh, level out at about 29 to 30 milliwatts ish. This thing's relatively stable. But I was wondering why I was only getting 30 milliwatts. It kind of was kind of, uh, you know, disappointing in a way. Um, so I kind of just went along with it for the, for the next day. And then I thought, well, this driver is technically designed for two 3.7 volt cells. And so I decided to say, let's see what happens when we put two 16 340s in there. Once I stuck those in there, the output pretty much doubled, if not uh, increased by uh, two and a half times. So we're looking at probably 50 to 60 milliwatts on this, which is phenomenal. You know, 50 to 60 milliwatts really technically is not a whole lot of power, but because this thing is 520 and it's closer to the uh, peak of the visible light spectrum, or 555, than say, you know, 638 or 445, the visibility is going to be much higher. So this 50 to 60 milliwatt laser is, believe it or not, about as bright as my 570 uh, to 590 milliwatt 445. Um, there's actually a website that you can go to, um, it's kind of a relative beam brightness calculator, not 100% accurate, but there is uh, one on there, and when you type in 60 milliwatt or 50 milliwatt, um, well, 50 to 60 milliwatt 520 versus uh, 590 milliwatt 445, it shows that the output um, is pretty much the same, the brightness I mean, 
So the brightness on the beams are pretty much identical. And I do have a 590 milliwatt 445, so uh, I did fire them side by side to see what would happen. And they do, they both pretty much look the exact same brightness, even though uh, the blue one's nearly you know, 10 times more powerful. And side by side 532, see if we can keep it from mode hopping. My floor is crooked, so that's why the laser looks crooked. <laughs> And then we have 520 right here. So, so I thought this was kind of cool. I actually purchased um, the 520 host from Survival Laser, and the owner of Survival Laser was nice enough to actually put a green tail caps uh, rubber boot cap on there because I ordered the green heat sink. So it's pretty much like he knew that I was going to be building a green laser. So he uh, went ahead and just installed a nice little green cap for me. So that was nice of him. There it is, guys. The new uh, build of mine, the PL520 and a C6 host, putting out about 50 to 60 milliwatts. I'm not going to laser uh, put it on the laser power meter right now because I can pretty much uh, say for sure this thing is in between 50 and 60 milliwatts. And speaking of visibility, 531 milliwatts, 638. <laughs> 50 to 60 milliwatt 520, as you can already see, they're pretty much the same uh, brightness and overall output, not output, but uh, just visibility. Then of course you have 90 milliwatt 532. So there you go. That shows you right there, it's kind of proof uh, to show you guys just how incredibly visible uh, green is to the human eye. 531 milliwatts, 50 to 60 milliwatts. Even though the red is a lot more powerful, they both appear to be the same brightness. Alright, thanks for watching guys.